responsibility uh, for screening uh, mm -hmm. carries a uh, certain uh, amount of audience. Is it a, a possibility only in the, in the uh, states, or is it? Well, we, we only, or how, how is it working? Well, we only control the United States mm -hmm. territory in the sense of theatrical, and so that's where we're going to put it in the fall. Mm -hmm. But you know, in, in other places, I mean, it's so hard. distribution is so tough for these type of movies. Um, there's just not enough. There's just not a big audience going, you know, public audience that goes to see black and white mm -hmm. sex tape movies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and maybe we had someone in it besides me, possibly. Um, but yeah, so it's hard to cultivate that crowd to get there. Mm -hmm. Social networking obviously helps a lot, but, but still. I mean, to get, in the United States, to get someone out of their house, in their car, into the theater to see a black and white movie, not going to happen. So. Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, what if, it, if somebody, for example, in Hungary, like yeah, yeah. came from, so mm -hmm. okay, you gather a, a crowd of, I don't know, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. How is it working? So, uh, 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 is it that uh, an easy? Because, uh, yeah, it probably to, be, to yeah. be very frank, I, I asked uh, uh, cinema, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. the first question yeah. was that, okay, we need that, these, these, these answers mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we can get any answer to you, that yeah. it's possible or not. Yeah. So, how is it working technically? Technically, <laughs> it would be a Blu-ray. Really it would be a Blu-ray. It would just be a Blu-ray. Yeah. I mean, we own all that. Yeah, we, Michael and I own the, the rights to right. movies throughout. So it'd just be contacting us and, and being able to get a uh, Blu-ray from us. Mm -hmm. there, there, are, there are other cases yeah. of movies. Um, there was a film that I was associated with uh, last week called *The Age of Stupid*, where actually interest groups got yeah. in touch and they were able to get you know this put together the people yeah, so and actually you know, rent out a theater or do whatever they wanted, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite easy to organize these days, all kinds of things like that. That's And the third one is about the DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, will it be uh, a regional free one? Yeah, um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to the present thing. I think, I think what's, what it's going to be is a DVD when you program it. When you put it in, it tells you what region, yeah. and then you, it will lock into that region once you do it. Yes. Yeah, that's what the DVD would be. Like. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when you put when you put it into your computer or whatever, it's going to say pick a region and then it will lock. Uh, yeah, but only, uh, only the first five times after it is locked. Well, <laughs> <laughs> five times. You got five times. <laughs> so if you put five, yeah, five, five, uh, no, five, uh, the five is the same, yeah. it's locked. Yeah, yeah the problem locked. with this film is I think people watch it more than five times. <laughs> <laughs> so. And, and uh, what kind of uh, subtitles will be on? Will there be subtitles or not? <laughs> not that I know of. Not that I know of. I mean, there's specific uh, countries that we're doing subtitles for right now. We're currently doing France, we're doing Germany, we're doing... I can't remember the other one we're doing. But there's only three right now that are currently being done. Mm -hmm. Those are the two I know right now. Is it possible to submit? Uh, excuse me? Is it possible to submit? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Martian, good. We had a double system. Okay. We, we used the, the, the camera for scratch yeah. you know, so we could track it. And then we had a double system when we'd go into live areas. We had uh, loud mics okay. on a, with a radio. At some point, yeah. it's really hard to understand yeah, 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 yeah. what they are saying. Yeah, no, exactly. And we kept it that way. And we did that on purpose. Because okay. we, we, we wanted to make it feel real and intimate. Yeah. that you couldn't hear what they were saying. Because it was so clear and it was so crisp. You're just watching another movie. We, we really wanted you to go, wow, this is really intimate. It's you know, almost like you would duck your head in and listen to what they have to say, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, when you traveled uh, to France, uh, did you plan where you wanted to shoot, or mm. did you just travel and we so shoot where, where we are? We kind of. I mean, not, not necessarily. We knew the cities. <laughs> we knew we were, kind of we knew we were going to go to uh, Saint Michel, we knew we were going to go to Saint Tropez, but certain areas we didn't know. You know, like when we went through Nice. We just kind of went through as a tourist, and they happened to have that market that day. And then the churches, we would just pick a church and go in. It yeah. changed as well. Didn't yeah, because you go to places mm -hmm. and you realize there's a lot more oh, yeah. value in one place. And then you say, okay, we'll spend an extra day here and strike something else. Yeah. So it, it was very, uh, uh, it, it grew in, yeah. uh, in a very mm -hmm. kind of organic way. Where as we started to move along in the production, more tourists started to come, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that they were isolated. So we always made sure that the two characters, there was nobody around them. 
And as we started to film, more tourists started to come in. So it was a little bit harder as we were filming to isolate the two. So we would move locations. Obviously, when we were in Paris the first time we left and we came back, it was a lot different. When we came back, it was just yeah. churches and everything were filled. And With the internet and the digital filmmaking, uh, it's, just, it's much more easier to make films yeah. today. So yeah. uh, it, for you, it's much more creative freedom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with this particular film, um, because we we we'd screened it a few times, we felt that the, to get it to the audience unscathed, without reviews, without articles, was the best possible chance for this film to to succeed. And. Um, not every film is going to be like that, but we felt that if we could get it to the public or the people who would watch this movie, that they could enjoy it. And then, you know, there's a thing about advertising that no matter if you have $100 million or $10, it's called word of mouth. You can't pay for word of mouth. You can't buy what, per what person's going to say to the other person. And that was what we were valuing the most of this film, that you would watch the movie and then you would tell a friend or that person would tweet or that. And that's what we were hoping would happen with this movie. Check that out. That's the ghost of Sean right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. Yeah. Looking over us. Uh, the last question um, for Lars only. Um, was a kind of one side yes. movie. Uh, Big Sue is kind of each generation, so yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. like a, a travel to yeah, yeah. history. Yeah, 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 so yeah. what's next? Um, pornography. <laughs> 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 it's the same movie, but with no talking <laughs> <laughs> just, the, yeah. just the real... And a different score. <laughs> More like a wah wah chuk chuk What are we doing next? We're doing um, a, a, almost a sci-fi movie. Very close to a sci-fi movie. Like a sci-fi comedy movie. Ooh, yeah, that's what we're doing next. So, I mean, we're, we're, Mike and I are, are just big fans of cinema, mm -hmm. and we don't feel obligated to stick to one, uh, you know, genre. Mm -hmm. We just love movies, and we, we feel like we want to make a certain type of movie. We're going to make it, and we're not beholden to say, well, the Polish brothers only make this type of movie, or they're going to do this type of movie. We felt when we write a movie or we do a story, we feel what's the best genre or, or format we can tell the story in, and we kind of pick it. We felt the French New Wave was the best way to tell this particular story. I don't think it would have done well doing it in color with a big post, you know, with big crew and all that kind of, and all that stuff that comes with a big, with a big movie. So yeah. Yeah. So it worked, you know. Um, so the next one, you know, we'll look at the format. We'll look at what we're going to shoot it on. And There we go. Um, I have two questions for you, Mike. The first one is about, you were saying, um, the fact that you shot it in black and white, mm -hmm. when you started writing the story mm -hmm. so many years ago, yeah. did you always know that you wanted to shoot it in black yeah. and white? Yeah, yeah, we and wanted to. Why? Because it's, it's an actor's medium. That's the color. The color is, is in the performance of the actors. And that's something that we felt we wanted to really capture their emotion. And we felt black and white was, you know, it's Hyper romantic now, even more so than what it was. But our original thought was to shoot it on eight millimeter, super eight, mm -hmm. and we were going to do it on the, the small, uh, the small cameras in 1994. And then as the formats grew, it took it took years for it to come all the way back around to that small camera. So when we saw those cameras come out, we knew they were going to shoot. We're like, we can do for love's only on that. Mm -hmm. So it took a while, but because we wanted to do it with what we did with the super eight, do the same thing, be able to go into locations on discreet and shoot the same way. Mm -hmm. And so that camera allowed us to do that again. Yeah. And the other question is about the music. Mm -hmm. Obviously everything that's instrumental is yeah. um, a score. Really yeah. work. But what about all the songs? Who chose those songs? And I'm going to assume you did a song yeah. for yeah. music. What motivated you to for that song for that scene? Um, Michael and I are huge, huge fans of just music in general, all genres. Um, and we just felt that each one kind of represented the scene that it needed to be in. Um, the energy, you look at the energy, not so much as the lyrical content, but some
some of them kind of match, which is really, that worked really, really well. Obviously, the John Lennon piece worked really well. Some of the, uh, the Jeff Buckley's piece worked really, really well. Um, we're just big fans of music, and you know, we have huge libraries, and we just kind of threw songs, seeing which would work. You know, and those are, those are particular songs that, you know, it's heavy on the mon the movie's heavy on the montage, but I felt that represented what it's like to be in love. It feels that way to me personally, so I wanted that to always be conveyed that they weren't grounded in conversation and they weren't grounded in arguing or talking about what they were doing. So I felt songs represented. Hey, this is what it feels like to be them. I mean, who doesn't have a song that when it comes on, you just suddenly start thinking, yeah, I remember, it's yeah. beautiful. Music's we have a song. Before. We do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, is this a time and place? For no, that's not. Particularly, you know, the editor is, a, was a, is an older guy, not too much older than me, but he grew up watching. He was a huge fan of French New Wave, and that he came up through that era. And uh, he knew exactly there, there, there's rules, but there's no rules in that kind of in that kind of editorial. But particularly when I when I would write a scene, that that particular scene, I think we shot like an hour of footage of me and her passing that camera back and forth, and then passing the Leica that I had, because we had the